Hello, my name is Vanessa Bright. I'm a psychoanalyst. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a subject that I feel very passionate about, and that is having practitioners do their emotional homework. And that's a subject that was uh, talked about in my acupuncture school. That was the phrase that was used, emotional homework. And and the reason it's, it's so broad is that it can take many forms. And one of the forms that I feel really strongly about, of course, is, is uh, psychoanalytic work. And, you know, you do such amazing work as, you know, whether you're an acupuncturist or you're a craniosacral practitioner, you're a massage therapist, reflexologist, I mean, I can just <laughs> list them all, but it is really important work. People rely on you. Uh, you come into contact with all kinds of people, with all kinds of issues that uh, will sometimes trigger you and not just because you feel for that person, not just because you, you know, are upset or kind of feel helpless, things like that, but also it'll touch your emotional issues, especially when it comes into the interpersonal realm. So you may have a client who's very compliant, who, you know, does their homework, does you know, their emotional work, um, does their work with you, really you know takes the herbs or you know does relaxation techniques so you know exercises eats well things like that you may have people who don't you may have people who are more resistant to it um, and I'm sure that that's you know that's something that you know how to work with however you'll also have people who will bring their own stuff into the relationship with you and so what that looks like it can vary and you know, um, for example, people who ask for extra things or extra time on the table or, you know, who uh, then the money comes in if they want to pay you less or they want to, um, you know, take their time to pay or things like that. Or on the other side, want to try to pay you more, want to tip you, right? So things like that that come into play. Um, so all of those things will bring up issues that sometimes you'll be okay with dealing with kind of in the moment and sometimes there'll be deeper stuff. I remember in my own uh, training and then later when I first started um, working as an acupuncturist uh, at a clinic, um, there would be all kinds of people that would trigger up my issues. I had one client who was so angry all the time that she wouldn't look at me and um, Right now, having had my own homework done, <laughs> having had lots of analysis for myself and um, you know, having the benefit of perspective and many years of experience later, I could see that she was really hurting. She was really in need of care and support and for somebody to understand her anger. However, at the time, I was just triggered. I went into myself. I went into, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? How can I help her? What should I change? If she would ask for extra time on the table or she would ask for extra needles, <laughs> I mean, all sorts of things that now as an, as an analyst, I can understand much deeper. At the time though, I really needed for somebody to kind of help me figure out where that's coming from for me, why I would get so triggered that I couldn't be with her issues. Um, so those are the kinds of issues that clients can trigger for you. Uh, you may have more internal things come up, like one of the f most popular ones, most common ones I should say, is the imposter syndrome, where you feel like you're pretending, you feel like you're playing doctor or you're, you know, just you don't know what you're doing, your years of experience don't count somehow. Um, some clients can trigger that as well if they come in and say, they're like, you're not doing anything for me, why am I even here? Right? But then a lot of times people might be really grateful and really happy to see you and you still might have that feeling. You might still feel like, well, why are they thankful? What do they even like me for? I, I don't even know, like, what am I even doing for them? Right? So lots of those things are linked to a lot of your past and a lot of it has to do with you know whether you were encouraged to trust your gut to be yourself to own your feelings things like that 
Um, another, um, another issue here is, I've kind of mentioned it obliquely already, but that of boundaries. You know, like the people who ask you for extra time or sometimes, you know, can you see me on a Sunday and I really don't have any other time. I'm really hurting, right? The, the wish to be taken care of might be very strong. And then if you're an empath, which you can take another look at in one of my other videos, if you're an empath, you have that urge, you have that just pull to, oh my God, this person's hurting. You really feel it. You want to help them. But then if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't know how to set those boundaries, if you've never set boundaries before, or if you've never had it modeled to you, what that's like, um, all those sorts of things, you may wind up overexerting yourself or overbooking yourself and you know not knowing how to say no is another big issue which you know relates to this boundary issue so all of that is ideal for working within psychoanalysis it's so important that you understand where you come from where your motivations come from including the really positive ones you know but then are there any clients that you start kind of slowly resenting and does that possibly come from your not having set enough limits and boundaries did you take a fee that was too low for you to feel good about did you book a seven o'clock in the morning or in the evening for that matter a session that you really don't want to work um is that because you feel like you can't say no um, or you that you feel obligated or that you feel guilty you know if you uh, take care of yourself so all of that um, is important and I, so I hope I've given you kind of enough examples um, to think about work with um, the important thing is that the more you take care of yourself and the more you know yourself the more you know who you are where you come from what your issues are, what tends to get triggered up for you. The better you can be with your clients, the more present you can be, the more aware you can be of what their issues are and what needs addressing. And of course, the better boundaries you can set. And that way you will also be modeling for them what good boundaries are, what good bedside manner is, what kindness is. If you're resentful of that client that you're taking $30 from and you're seeing at 7 in the morning, you're not going to be as present and as aware, potentially. I, I, I guess I'm speaking for myself um, because there may be people that, you know, where that's no problem. But I'm just kind of picking an example that I think, you know, many people would resonate with where, you know, you've taken a fee that's too low and or you're working an hour that just doesn't work for you. And then it may be unconscious. It may not be something that you're like walking in and just being like, oh, why am I here? I don't like this. I don't want to do this. It may be unconscious. It may just be that you're a little bit shorter with them or you're a little bit kind of rushing or things like that. Um, so if that's happening, you know, how good is their treatment going to be? And how good is it for you? And then you're also modeling to them um, this attitude of like, it's okay to work yourself to the bone. So I hope you're realizing from what I'm saying that, that you know, how important self-care is in your work. And when you work with people, it's just paramount. And so I hope that this has been a useful little video for you. Um, please, send me your responses and your comments um, you can of course go to my website vanessahannabright.com email me at vanessabright at inbox.com i always welcome your input thank you for watching and have a wonderful day